So welcome to another episode of Ascension with A Course in Miracles. And today is Wednesday, June the 30th. And I am super exciting. We are completing the first half of the year 2021. And what a year it has been. And today happens to be a day that one of our dear friends that joins us on a regular basis, Vern, is moving. He has manifested a new location um, and so I want to collectively send him love and ease and peace throughout his, his uh, move from one home to another today. And What's then that? we have, we have some of our, our family here that joins us on a regular basis who are going through some challenges, be they physical challenges, emotional challenges, family challenges, work challenges. I, I coach so many of you that I know or have you in some of my classes that I know uh, what many of you are going through. So I want us to collectively hold for each and every one of us that come together with a desire to expand our awareness so that we can ascend into a higher level of consciousness, hold together the, the intention that everybody can move through whatever they're going through with ease, with peace, with grace, I'm about to sneeze, <coughs> excuse me, and release whatever no longer serves us, even if it's through a sneeze, so that each and every one of us can begin to deliberately tap into guidance. Ascension is, is only possible, only possible for those who have said, God, what would you have me do? because you're choosing to ascend to a higher level of consciousness. You're deliberately choosing to see things the way God sees them. You're choosing to see from the top of the mountain, from the 50,000 view up in the sky, instead of from the valley, from the bottom, looking at it from the low frequency of the eagle, and instead ascend to seeing from the high vibration of God. So ascension, is a deliberate climb through the levels of consciousness. It's all ascension is. As a soul, we choose to descend into the density of, of human existence. We, we, a divine being enters and has a human experience. My understanding from my guides and other, other teachers that I listen to is that the plan, the the if you want to call it, you know, the original plan was for divine beings to have a human experience. It was not about go in there and become as evil as you can be. It was about having a human experience. But over the millennia, over the thousands of years, tens of thousands of years of humanity being on this planet, disconnected from their divinity, purposely, purposely disconnected from their divinity, we have descended into the absolute lowest, lowest places that we can go in terms of playing around in the darkness, in terms of trying on the evils that are possible. Now, this is, this is a concept that only makes sense to one who is awake and can ascend to a higher perspective because we've got to accept that, that it's possible and forgive ourselves for having participated in that. Because it is not natural to experience darkness for that many lifetimes, it's not natural. It's possible, but it's not natural. We have a built-in natural ability to choose to ascend, to choose, test this out and go, hmm, I don't like it, let me go up. It does not take long, does not take long for anyone in their sanity to observe the evil that is taking place and say, I don't want that. But because humanity has been stuck in a dense planet for thousands of years, when Jesus came 2000 years ago to tell us how to ascend, love God and love your neighbor as yourself, you know, it, it's very simple. You begin to, to see things from the perspective of love. We wouldn't do what we do to each other. Jesus came to teach us that 2000 years ago. I, I, in my, my guidance with Jesus, have asked the question, 
why is it taking us so long? It's such a simple teaching. And the messages that I keep getting back is because we are hard-headed. We are really stubborn. The Course in Miracles is, is really, really clear. It's so simple what we need to do to correct that. We need to train our mind to understand that we have two voices. Once you know one voice speaks to evil, pain, and suffering, and the other voice speaks to love, joy, and peace, nobody in their same mind chooses suffering. So why is this lasting so long? Because we cultivate egoic pride. And this is where spiritual people, religious people, um, agnostic people, atheist people in their pride, I already know it all. I know what God knows, are stuck in, in, in a place of, of where, where we literally cannot move past that because we get all spiritualized. We think we know what God knows. We teach it. We preach it. And in that place of arrogance, we actually are showing how ignorant we are. And today we are at a, at a point in time where we have to admit ignorance is not bliss. It's not bliss. So what is happening is that more and more is coming to the surface so that we can stop being so ignorant, so that we can begin to see what is happening. And what is happening is that we give our power away to the external uh, forces, the powers that be. When we in our pride, I know everything, and we create idols, external authorities, who are the only ones who can know more than we do, instead of the internal authority, which is God inside, in our pride to be right about what we know and who knows more than we do, we hold ourselves in a, in, in a place where we cannot move from the denseness of the ego. In my, again, my communications with Jesus, Jesus has made it very clear to me, that's not natural, but you can do it. You have free will, so you can choose to do what's not natural. And the reason it's not natural is only that which is natural brings joy, period. When you do what feels natural, it brings joy. When you do what is not natural, but is the result of the nurture that you have received, the, the teachings of those who, who raise us, who teach us, who, you know, politicians who control us, the nurture, the environment that we have grown up in that tells us that what is natural is to listen to somebody else. When, when we do that, we literally turn ourselves backwards. We, we, we do a, a backwards, inside out um, process with, with truth. What then is true becomes a lie. What is a lie becomes the truth. So we have to correct our mind, write ourselves back up, rewrite, rewrite, look at all of the ways that we have given our power away. And from that place, choose to move past our pride because you have the courage. You have to have courage to say you're wrong. You have to have courage to affirm that there's more and that that more can only come to you through coming inside. We have to be willing to go into the stillness within because that's how we begin to affirm that we have access to God. It takes God from a cloud out there and brings it in here because at the end of the spiritual day, what awakening is all about is the recognition that I and the Father are one. It is not I and the Father on a cloud are one. We've done that for thousands of years. The church put God on a cloud somewhere. How's that working for us? It hasn't. I and the Father are one is God inside of me. That is what we have to get really humble about is that we we are the bringers of God's love and light to the planet. We have to affirm the truth that has been true always. But when we got taught that authority is outside of us, we got completely turned upside down, backwards. So in our willingness to go to neutral, we begin to cultivate trust in another way. Neutral means I'm going to stop judging it from the eyes of the ego 
This is where the Course in Miracle tells us that we've got to get comfortable with, I don't know what anything is for. In neutrality, I am beginning to cultivate trust in a higher vibing truth. As we let go of the lower vibing true truth that we thought was true. So everything that is unlike love is being amplified so that we can take a look at it. Everything that is unlike love is activating the fears, the anxiety, the worries, the concerns, because what we thought kept us safe and, and had our best interest, external authorities, they are failing us. And we're seeing the censoring that is taking place because we are recognizing that the censoring is one-sided. Once the mind can move to a place of courage and gets neutral, and instead of judging, which we do when we're in pride and we know it all, we are very good at quick at judging. When we move to neutral and we are no longer judging, we can begin to hear what's happening. And that's when we begin to tap into the reason that is beyond the unreasonable truth of the ego, we begin to tap into the reason of creator inside of us. When we tap into that reason inside of us, we begin to see that everything of the ego operates in double standards. And we all grew up, every one of us grew up with our parents telling us, do as I say, not as I do, or a teacher telling us that, or somebody telling us that. How many of you had your parents drinking a, a alcohol in front of you saying, I can drink, but you can't because you're a child. Or I, I can you know, do this or, or lie about this because I'm the adult, but you can't because you're a child. I can stay up late because I'm the adult, but you can't because you're a child. We learned that some people can uh, break the rules, even if they make the rules, and other people can't. And some people can't question the rules. They just have to abide by the rules. That double standard is showing up right now, especially in, censor in censorship. We can begin to see it. Why can't this doctor say something, but that one can? Why can this politician say the same thing, but that one can't? Why can this group get away with promoting this, but that one can't? So as we continue to ascend, move past our pride, have the courage to affirm there's got to be another way, go to neutral so that you can begin to hear what's going on. Trust that there's something inside of you that is beginning to resensitize itself so that you can activate the willingness necessary to feel for truth, because only when you feel truth inside of you, do you feel peace and clarity, which then brings you hope and optimism for the future. And it's in that hope and optimism that things are going according to a beautiful plan for ascension is that we can then begin to accept how powerful the process of forgiveness is, because if you don't forgive, you cannot have harmony. A mind that is busy blaming is down here in pride, not up here in harmony. Because if you need to be right, somebody has to be wrong. Guess what that does? That brings us down to blame. So you're operating inside of a prideful righteousness that allows you to blame. You can't create harmony. Look at the, the craziness in the mind when we are in a state of blaming and we are righteously indignant. So that forgiveness is key. As some of you who are in my uh, healing relationship through forgiveness class that we just started this Monday night, inside of that class, we have to look at that crazy mind. Um, and if you don't look at the crazy mind that wants to have you blame, you cannot go to the place that is necessary, which is the stillness and the quiet inside that allows us to forgive. And forgiveness, according to the Course in Miracles, is a very simple process, but the ego mind won't let us accept that it it's simple because in its righteousness, it justifies to us why those other people are wrong and why they took our power away so that we don't see that in the blaming we give our power away. The minute we blame, we say you over there, you boss, you job, you government, you have power over me. 
but the ego doesn't let you see that that's what you're doing because you it activates in the blame a sense of righteousness that makes you think you're empowered and they are the ones who are um, at, at the, don't have power. But it's backwards. Why? Because everything of the ego is backwards. It's upside down. It's turned around. And I'm telling you, I am so grateful that you guys are here, that you consistently participate in this. Or, you know, like I said, some of you, I coach some of you are in, in my classes. There is a, a need for commitment to study what the course is teaching because we learned the ways of the ego through repetition, many, many years of saying the same thing over and over and over again. It requires a lot of repetition of the truth to inch our way little by little by little through the levels of consciousness because you have to override what you first thought was true. And when you were right about that, it's very difficult, except for a very mature mind to say, you know what? I was wrong and it's okay. I was wrong about what I used to believe. It doesn't, doesn't change who I am. It changes what's possible for, for me to experience. You can't change who you are because you're holy, but you can change the experience that has you feel suffering or has you feel sovereignty, has you feel fear or has you have faith and hope and optimism in the world that is possible when we align in our knowingness that we came to this planet to experience being humans, not to get lost in the ego's control, but to activate our soul so that we can co-create heaven on earth. Our birthright, according to the Course in Miracles, and it's even stated in our constitution, is happiness. Course in Miracles says that is our purpose, is to be happy. If we're not experiencing happiness consistently, something is off. What's off? We don't know what we don't know when we believe what we've been indoctrinated with and not what is naturally inside of us. So what's naturally inside of us? The creator of the universe itself. Not one of us here is God, all that God is, but each and every one of us is made of all that God is. So everything about Lina is, is God expressed as it is about Christo and Patricia and Kat. It's God expressed. However, am I, am I remembering what God knows or did I block it with what the ego teaches? That's it. It's very simple. Awakening starts with curiosity. And from curiosity moves into self-awareness. From self-awareness begins the journey of awakening, which is a pretty long bridge that we have to cross. This is a bridge, a bridge. We have to look at everything we have believed and begin the process of walking it up through the levels of consciousness. Change our mind about it little by little by little by little by little until we rest in the truth. That is the same for everybody. That's why when you operate from the higher levels of consciousness, there's nobody to blame because you know everybody has the same power. So it's just a matter of how are they using it? Why would you blame somebody who's using their power to suffer? It's their power. They can do that just as we can use our power to suffer. So we forgive from here, forgive them. They don't know that they're using their power to suffer because they don't have the self-awareness that we have had the courage to look into and affirm it's the truth of who we are and nobody frees themselves. Nobody frees themselves to experience their sovereignty while we're blaming others because blame is a low frequency. So we're going to continue today with completing the, the last segment of what we started um, last week because we, we want to get into um, a lesson that came to me today for us to share. And we, and if somebody will put this in the chat, we have been reading for the last two weeks, chapter one in the text. And chapter one is the, the meaning of miracles. And we've been reading section six, the illusion of needs. And the illusion is of needs is just making it clear to us that when you know the truth of who you are, you don't have any needs. 
because the creator of all that is, is in you. And when we activate that creative power, what are you lacking? However, because we've been trained in that God is outside, the power is outside, we're empty, we don't have anything in us, we're sinners, we're not good enough. We are taught that we are empty of power. So we got to go outside, get educated, take what other people tell us as the truth and believe um, the, the medical establishment, believe the education establishment, believe the political establishment, believe the religious establishment, believe the parental establishment. So we go and take what they say is true and accept it, which makes us believe that we don't know much. We're always having to go outside to get that information. So we have this incredible illusion of needs. There's nothing that we need externally. Even as a human, we came to have a human game. We came to play that we need a house, we need a partner, we need a job, we need money. All of those things are the result of the low consciousness that has been trained into believing you need those things to be happy. Well, if our birthright is to be happy, why do we need that outside to be happy in here? That's part of the backwards teachings that we have received. So we've got to understand that there is an illusion of needs. We need to tap into the source inside of us that creates everything. Because at the end of the day, the ascension is to clear our minds so that we know that with a sense of wholeness, a sense of oneness, we are going to manifest, bring into manifestation, into co-creation, all of the things that we could possibly need for the experience, not because we lack them in here, but because we take them from our mind and manifest them outside for the enjoyment. We don't know that our thoughts create our reality when we're operating in ego. We are told the boss created our reality because they gave us a race. A race. The doctor created our reality of well-being because they gave us a pill or the inner, or the surgery or the jab or whatever it is. We are told that they have the power and we need what they have. Otherwise, we're not okay. But here's the crazy thing. Our mind has given them the power through the blame. You know, when we blame them for our suffering, we also blame them. When we say you are my source of power, we're saying you give me the medicine, you give me the job and the money, and then I'm happy. It's the same blame. It's the same thing. You took my power from me. You give me my power. Same energy, which is to place responsibility outside of us. To ascend to this higher frequency means that we need to clean up our mind, stop thinking what we want is outside, start believing that it is all in here, and then cast it out, project it out. That's how powerful we are. And when two or more are gathered, we decide, nope, we are not going to go out there and work our, our asses off for whatever you think we're worth. We feel that we and the money are one. I want to experience the money. I want to experience it in a fun and easy way. And I, I can say, well, Lina, why don't I have more money? Why? Because at some level, my consciousness has allowed that to be my reality. I don't blame that the money didn't come to me from the outside. I'm questioning, well, why am I not putting more of it in my reality? So that's something for me to look at. But it's because I am absolutely clear that everything in my experience comes from my own desire. I need to believe that I want it and desire it. And it's just going to be fun for me to experience. It does not come to me from the outside. I place it out there for me to experience it. And that requires an incredible amount of commitment to be very clear about your thoughts. Because if it, the power is outside of you, it cannot be inside of you consciously. However, it's the same power that you're using to say that it's outside of you which makes the mind kind of go crazy um, when, when we hold the paradox that even while we believe something external has power about, over us, it's us giving it to it. Even while we believe that we have a need and it can only be satisfied externally, we are the ones who are projecting that need and making it seem like it's outside because all of it is happening inside of us. So in that section, the, this, this particular illusion of needs in section number six also goes on to tell us that 
the idea of order of needs, we made it up. There is nothing bigger, nothing smaller that, that needs, you know, the, this big thing. Oh my gosh, if I have cancer, if I have, um, you know, lost my job, that's really big. I, that's a big thing. But, oh, I stubbed my toe. That's a little thing. It's all the same. There is no order of you using your power. Our power is our thoughts, period. Thought that cancer is a big deal and a toe is not, is you choosing to say, I'm blaming cancer. You can, can make me feel bad, but toe, you can't make me feel bad. I am deciding where the power lies. Same thing. I decide who gets it, whether I am blaming this big bad thing or I am saying, nope, you don't have a toe. It's the same. We need to make sure that everything is understood as the same because it originates in one place and one place only. Where? In you. And what's in you? The creative source of all that is. So let me stop here and I want to check to make sure that this makes sense. So whoever wants to unmute yourselves, please. Did this, did this make sense to you? And if so, why, how, give me a little feedback. And I see we've got, um, Julia, you've joined us. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, so I wanna hear from you. One of you, unmute yourself. Loana, does that make sense to you? I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> My mind's trying to make sense of it. And that's the trick. Get the yeah. mind to make sense of it. But can I, can I ask you um, a couple of questions to help you make sense of it? All right. So bring to your mind, you don't have to share it with anybody here. And I invite everybody else to do the same thing. Bring to your mind the thought about something that you think is big that you don't have power over. That somebody else, something else is making you have that experience. Do you have that in your mind? Okay. Now bring into your mind something that you know you have total and complete power over and nobody can take that away from you. You've got both of those in your mind? All right. So what's the common denominator? Who is thinking? <laughs> Me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So bring to mind that thing that you are person that you believe has power over you. And now I want you to take these words that I'm going to share and just, just let them sink in and then share with us what you experienced. I have decided that I no longer want to use my power to empower you. I have decided to accept that I can change how I view you, how I view what you are doing to me. I am deciding that I no longer want to feel disempowered by you. How does that feel inside of you? Just to say those simple words. It does feel empowering. Yeah. It feels like I'm, like I said, taking my power back and not giving it away to yeah. a situation or a person. Now yeah, I'm going to, yeah, yeah now I'm going to say just a few more things and see what happens when you say this. While I stand in my ego pride and blame you, I am saying that I do not have the courage to accept how powerful I am and make a shift in my relationship with you because I prefer to feed my arrogance, my ego arrogance that says somebody else has power over me. How does that feel? It doesn't feel good at all. No. But does it feel accurate that that's what you're doing? Ego, my ego and my ego mind, yes. Yeah, totally. So just that clarity, you're, you don't have the courage in that moment when you listen to the voice of the ego, you don't have the courage because a veil gets pulled over you. There's this veil, this, this untruth that says that person has power over me. So you have to have the courage to pull the curtain, pull the veil and say, no, I can handle whatever you're doing because how I respond to you 
is well within my control. That so, is, yeah. Yeah. I hear it and logically that makes sense. And even I felt it, but oh my gosh, my well-trained ego. Oh, wow. Exactly. It's, it's very difficult. Know. It's very Come difficult back. to override our need to be right about our blames. So the, the opportunity here is to say, I don't want to be right about this, this source of disempowerment anymore. Very gently, that's, that's self-love. I love myself enough to, to be honest with myself and I love myself enough to not make myself you know, feel bad about this. I'm learning, I am, I'm correcting misinformation that I've been holding on to for 30 plus years. So that desire to correct in your own mind can only happen through gentleness because you have to rise into the loving energy that chooses internally to say, I'm not going to make myself wrong for what I believe. I'm going to make what I believe incorrect. I don't have to believe it. I don't have to believe it that way. I choose to believe it another way. So you get to still be right about what you believe, but you want to believe in your right mind when what God knows is true. And that's, that's the shift that we're going through. So yeah, thank you for um, being willing to go through that power. It's all in our mind. We project out our experience. So the correction has to happen inside. So thank you, sister. Thank you so much. Sure. Absolutely. Anybody else that wants to make a comment about what we've talked about or maybe about what, what Luana just went through, you might have gone through something similar. Just unmute yourself if, if you want to share. And if we don't have anybody, I'll just finish then the reading of that section. All right. So if somebody wants to unmute themselves, then you just speak up. But I'm going to start. The, the last paragraph that we read in that section last week, the, the main thing in there that I want you to, to know is that the real purpose of this world, I'm, I'm reading from the course, the real purpose of this world is to use it to correct our unbelief. We don't believe that we're powerful beyond measure. We don't believe that because we've been trained, conditioned into submission since the time we were little. We've been told that we don't know anything. And now that you all know that I am a brand new grandmother to a little baby boy that just celebrated uh, eight weeks um, on, this, on this glorious planet just, just a couple of days ago, this little two month old to me is a master. He's a master that was incarnated to bring a lot of wisdom with him. But when I was a mother to his mother, 33 years ago, I thought my little baby came in with nothing in its head and I needed to fill it up with information. So I filled her mind in a way that she needed to submit her wisdom and put her wisdom in the background. And she needed to submit to me being the one with all the wisdom. Mother knows best. Schools knows best. Teacher knows best. Everybody knows more than you. That way of parenting, obviously quite unconscious, is, has to shift because these little ones are coming in as masters because they see their reincarnation. There are grandparents reincarnating. There are great-great-grandparents reincarnating, seeing the madness that's going on in the planet and saying, all right, you people, we're going to come in there and we're going to bring you some love and light and we are going to push you. We're going to make sure that you cannot control us anymore. And for the last couple of generations, because my kids definitely did it, they're pushing against the system. They're, they're becoming more and more defiant because they're becoming more and coming in, being born more and more certain of what they know. So they're not accepting willy-nilly the nonsense, the BS, the belief systems that we are uh, forcing upon them, which is a good thing. These little ones are not accepting it. So they're using this, this world that we have created to assert their belief. We, those who've been here longer and who have fallen into the egoic trap, we have to use this world to correct why we don't believe in the, in the power that we have. So now let's read paragraph number five. 
which is, and again, if somebody can put it in the notes, we are in the text. We are in chapter one, section number six, chapter one, section six. So paragraph number five, all aspects of fear are untrue. Let your ego dance with that one. The ego doesn't want to think what everything. Oh, my fears are untrue. Of course, they're true. My, what I am afraid of is real. Well, that that's a trap that the ego puts us all in. So all aspects of fear are untrue because they do not exist at the creative level and therefore do not exist at all. God did not create fear. God created only love. Ego makes fear as a block to love. Let me say that again. God created love, which is an energy that extends. Like light, it extends. The ego mind, which is a mind that is conditioned against its natural knowingness, blocks it. So when I tell my daughter when she was a baby and I tell her, you're going to get your information from mommy. This is what is true. It acts as a block because in her mind, in her willingness to please in her, because all children come in, they're lovers, they're pleasers. Why? Because they're happy. They, they just want to do, you know, they want to go along. We are naturally very, very adept at being tribal at being uh, just co-creative with everybody. We, we don't push against, that's not our natural uh, sense of self that we learn that later on. For, for survival, we learned that. But listen to this again. All aspects of fear are untrue because they do not exist at the creative level. So where my grandson is, is when I see him, I see him and I go, what do you have to teach me? I want you to tell me what you want to learn today. That's how we are going to uh, be with that child as he grows up. I want to know, why did you do that? Why did you think that? Why, why is that interesting to you? Instead of, no, this is how you do it. This is what you're supposed to do. You're going to follow the instructions. If mama ain't happy and nobody happy, so you line up right behind me. So it's a shift. Fear arises from a sense of not being able to be ourselves. So fear. God didn't create fear. Like there is no, no source of darkness. None of us turn on the dark switch at night to get darkness. All of us, all of us know that the sun is always shining. Darkness is the result of the earth blocking the light. God created love that extends. Fear is the result of us blocking love. It's a choice to believe something that is not true. We have got to understand that, which is why through my coaching, through my teaching, I'm always attempting to get everybody to see everything in two columns. And here, basically, we have two columns. If I turned it upside down, there are two columns and then a bridge between the two. This is the way of God. This is the way of the ego. This is what we have to do to, to cross that bridge. So let me keep reading here. To whatever extent you are willing to submit your beliefs to this test, to that extent, are your perceptions corrected? So as I had Loana look at her thoughts, one situation, she says it has power over her. The other one, she has power over it. It's all happening in her mind. So the fear about the one that she believes has power over her, that was learned. That's not natural. It didn't come from God. God gives her the ability to love, to extend love. If she wants to extend love to that and correct it, she must first love herself enough to accept her power. And that's the invitation, Luana. You decide, you know what? I love myself too much to be afraid of anything. I love myself too much to entertain that low frequency that makes me sick or activates uh, dysfunction in my body. We have to love ourselves enough to clear our mind of what is not true. That's not easy to do because we're trained. Well, if it's, if, I, if it's not true, who am I going to blame? We're used to blaming, to giving power somewhere else. And when you blame, those of you who've seen me do this a million times, you know what's coming. Here's the word blame. You see that clearly there? So when we blame, we choose to be lame. We're lame. 
we are operating from a misperception. We're making ourselves victims. We're making ourselves incapable of changing our mind. Well, if you can't change your mind, somebody's going to change it for you. Somebody's going to have power over it because you give it to them. So don't be lame and blame. Be courageous and get take your power back. So all you need to do is to be willing to submit your beliefs to the test. Is this what God believes and is natural in me? Or is this man-made, ego-made and is not natural? It's I've accepted it from the nurturing that I've received, the conditioning, the environment. Is this what my grandmother taught me? Is this what dad taught me? Is this what teacher taught me? We have to get really comfortable that all of our egoic beliefs are all hand-me-down beliefs. If you don't want to wear hand-me-down clothes that you wore from, you know, it was your sister's outfit and you wore when you were three years old, don't wear hand-me-down beliefs that you picked up when you were three years old. And when your mom or dad or somebody said something, you know, they're, oh, you know, stop being so stupid. Just because you heard them say that when you were three, you don't need to hold on to that hand-me-down beliefs. They heard it from somebody said that to them. Some, a professor, a grandparent, somebody said that. So they handed it down to you. The ego always hands down to somebody else the dysfunctional beliefs because it needs agreement from other beliefs to feel okay. At the soul level, we don't need anybody to agree with us because we know that we all know the same thing at the soul level. You're not looking for agreement because we all know the truth. Here, we're looking for agreement because we're all trying to believe a lie and make it true. So we've got to get people to agree with us. Otherwise, it doesn't hold water. So it's a very different way of looking at things. So every belief can be corrected. If you move from your pride of righteousness and go to the courage to affirm something new, to be willing to affirm that there's got to be another way, which means you take your mind into neutral, don't judge it, and begin to trust God, what would you have me know about this? What do you believe about this? How do you see this? And everything that God creator um, does, it does with love, with acceptance, with total and complete joy. So if there's no joy, if there's no acceptance, you know, respecting other differences, if there is no love, it's not of God. That's a simple test. That's a simple test. If you can accept um, that you have been wrong. If you can accept that somebody else is, is wrong, that's the first step in going into neutral. You know what? I've done it. They're doing it. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to argue it. I'm not going to give it power by blaming. I'm going to accept that that's what's happening. Let me love myself enough to release my judgment of it. Let me love myself enough to recognize that I can change it. That's when we get our power back, when we know that we can change our mind. Then he goes on to say, in sorting out the false from the true, the miracle proceeds along these lines. It's a very simple way to test this. Perfect love casts out fear. If fear exists, then there is not perfect love. Perfect love does not see fear. So if you have a fear about anything, fear, oh my gosh, I, I won't find a job. Perfect love means that you love yourself enough to say, things are going to work out for me. I have a power inside of me that when I tap into it, it's going to intuitively give me ideas. It's going to let me know where to go, what to do synchronistically. Situations are going to show up in my life that are going to be assisting me in finding just the right thing for, the right, for, for what's happening right now. We have got to be willing to go into our mind to, to look for solutions, but you can't go into your mind to look for solutions if you are not willing to tap mind and heart together because God exists in the alignment of head and heart. You have to love yourself enough for the activation of creativity to flow from your mind. Mind is nothing more than a space of imagination. Nobody can find the mind because it's not like the brain. The brain is like a receiver of, of, of information. It's like the radio. But mind, creativity is like the sound waves. Nobody can go grab a sound wave. You can't grab the mind because it's, it's creativity. It's pure creativity. 
Are you creating with joy from a place that is that is totally completely new, fresh always? Or are you creating from what's in your brain, which is information that you're regurgitating because it's been trained into you? The, the brain is like a receiver of information. The mind is the conceiver of creativity. If your brain, if your radio is filled with propaganda, that's all you're going to re regurgitate as your reality. But if you tap into, you go to uh, a station that, that is absolutely not coming to you from a programming, but rather you open it up, open up to hear, you know, and, and we've got radios that give us stations that are specific jazz or country or whatever. But when you quiet your mind, where does the song that's never been sung before coming from? It doesn't come from the radio. It comes to the radio after it comes to a mind that receives information that nobody can tap into. So for it to be playing out of the brain, out of the radio, it has to come from beyond the human egoic conditioning. It has to come from the creative source. All of us tap into that creative source, the singer, uh, taps into that. The, the musician that writes a song that was never written before, where did that come from? Not the radio. Where does a formula come from that has never existed before? Not from the, the scientific books. It comes from a place that we have to access when we get still and quiet. So you have to love yourself enough to stop the fear and say, God, what would you have me do? If you have a, a uncomfortable relationship with God because God's still on the cloud and you think it's punishing you because everything in your life doesn't work. So you're used to blaming out there for, for your, your suffering. You've got to be willing to come inside and say, maybe I've been mistaken. The most humbling thing any of us can do, which is really the movement out of arrogance and ignorance. Those two go hand in hand, two sides of the same coin. If you think you know it all, you're being arrogant because you're being arrogant about how ignorant you are because you don't know what you don't know if you're being righteous about thinking you know something that is not accurate according to God. Believe me, I had to go through many, many, many challenging times. I thought I was going schizophrenic Spiritually, I was bipolar. I'm arrogant, I'm ignorant, I'm arrogant, I'm ignorant. You know, I'm arrogant, I'm righteous, but I'm ignorant because I don't really know the truth. I mean, lots and lots of years of, of feeling like I was going crazy. That's why most of the people that I'm in, are in, in insane asylums, they're not insane. They're just hearing the two voices and they can't decide between the two because no conscious person is teaching them. So perfect love casts out fear. If you're in fear, perfect love is not there. You're choosing to be in, in, in conflict and confusion, but only perfect love exists. So if there's fear, it produces a state that does not exist. So when you decide I'm a child of God, I'm holy, I'm holy and I know it. Fear has no power over me. And you sit with that thing that is activating fear and you look at that belief and you say, oh, this belief came from grandmother. I was eight years old when I learned it. Oh, that fear happened when I was two years old and mom left me, a, you know, a baby sat with somebody I didn't want to be with. And I felt, oh, people abandoned me or that fear started when my boyfriend broke up with me or my girlfriend broke up with me. Oh, that fear started when I heard a loud noise and I was in my room by myself and I was only one years old. I mean, fears start in the womb. You can have a fear from a past life, but until you get quiet, instead of going, oh, that fear is real, that fear is real, you go to no perfect love casts out all fear. I'm going to sit in stillness. I can handle any fear. It's just a thought in my head. And you are welcome. You have the courage to affirm, I can handle facing that fear. And you lovingly bring that belief into your conscious awareness. You bring it into your mind's eye and go, what is this fear? I'm afraid nobody will like me because that girlfriend, boyfriend uh, didn't want to be my friend in third grade. Is this really true that nobody likes me? Is this really true? that there's something wrong with me because they don't like me? Or is it true that they don't like me because they don't like me? 
what if they can have their own choices of who they want to be with? And then we get honest. Are there people that we have discarded that we didn't like? Oh, yeah, I've done that. So back to what I said earlier, you want to know the ego? Look for double standards. Why am I so upset about this one friend breaking up with me, but yet I've broken up with three, four, five, ten different people in my life? How come I break up with them? And it's okay, they deserve it. But this one friend breaking up with me, why does that have to mean that there's something wrong with me? Correct those double standards first by finding them and do exactly what it says in here. To whatever extent that you are willing to submit your belief to the test, is it a loving belief? No, it activated fear, fear that there's something wrong with me. The loving result, the loving correction is um, I am whole and complete. If they don't like me, it's okay. We don't have to have everybody like us. It is not necessary. Eight billion people on the planet spend your time loving the ones who want to be with you. Instead, we spend a really big part of our life attempting to get people that don't want to be with us to be with us. We do a lot of flips to try and convince them why we should be lovable to them. They're here to show us that we don't love ourselves enough because we are lame by blaming them for not giving us what we want when what we want is already inside of us and we would feel it if we would extend it. If you want to be liked, like everybody, then you are likable. You are being the presence of, of, of love. And anybody who does not want to be with us is actually a teacher teaching us what are we going to choose as the, 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 the filter that we're observing what is, are we going to choose to see it from this righteousness that I can only be happy if that person likes me, or I am happy regardless if anybody likes me. This level of confidence is only, is only reserved for those who are willing to stop trying to control the uncontrollables, which that's what's out there, and instead come inside and correct your misperception. That's what this is saying. Only perfect love exists. If there is fear, it produces something that is not, it's not real. The minute you sit in love, you can't experience fear. So if you're experiencing fear, you're not accessing the perfect love of God. You're accessing ego love, which is special love. And well, that's a whole different class. Um, so the, the last part of this particular section is believe this and you will be free. Perfect love casts out all fear. Only God can establish this. It, only God can establish this solution. And this faith is his gift. If you believe that you are the presence of love and light, you came here to extend love. That belief is going to free you from all suffering. While we are expecting something from the outside to make us feel good, we are going to suffer deeply because everything external, we projected it out there from our beliefs. So it has to give to us the confusion that's in our mind. Some people like us, some don't. Some jobs go well, some don't. Sometimes we have money, sometimes we don't. Or we have money and we fear that we're going to lose it. Or we have a person and we fear they're going to cheat on us. So that confusion comes from a mind that is confused a mind that doesn't see things only one way. If you saw it all only from strictly fear, you'd be in depression. You'd be right down here in, in the absolute despair, depression. You, well, you wouldn't be functioning very well. Most likely end up in suicide. If you believe God's way, you're going to be up here and nothing outside of you has power over you. So you know things come and things go. You're not attached you enjoy them, you live in the now, you're operating strictly from pure love, it casts out all fear, there is no fear, you're not going to entertain that something moving out of your experience or coming into it is going to activate um, discomfort because you don't give your power away. You're not being lame, you're being the presence of, of uh, perfect love. So this is what we have to learn. This is not a uh, an easy journey, but it is a simple lesson consistently taught in so many different ways through the Course in Miracles to be applied to all the different situations in our life. 
in all the possible ways that we, we are to look at it. That's why understanding the distinction between special love and special hate, which is the way the eagle conditionally loves, and understanding what is a holy relationship, which is based on perfect love. If we don't understand that, the distinction between love, we really cannot enjoy perfect love because we're entertaining confused love, which is egoic manipulative love. Um, so let me stop there, comments, questions, and then I wanna share with you uh, a simple lesson for us to look at today that is what came to me just to kind of ground in what we just finished reading from that section number six and uh, paragraph or in the text in chapter one. All right, unmute yourselves. Can I share? This is Jody. Yes, Miss Jody. Hi, hi, hi. Um, so good to be here. Um, okay, so I just want to tie in a couple things. Um, so bear with me with putting the thought together, but take your time. Okay. Um, so I find that I don't, you were talking a little earlier about giving your power away and having to do with, you know, having your reality based on what you're thinking and, um, and all that. And on that level, I am so uh, connected to source, understanding and knowing and embodying um, the divine being that I am. Like I feel grounded in that, which is so amazing, really. Thanks to you and Course of Miracles and, you know, my willingness. Um, so there's that. Um, so, so I'm in this, um, I'm in this company that I started and um and, and so here's the thing. So I'm in that and I'm watching um, things show up and somebody that I invited into the company said, well, how did you, how did you do that? Or how did you find this person? And I said, well, because I'm divinely led and it just happens and it shows up and it's really fun to, um, it's really fun to engage in that level of dancing with the divine. It's just fucking awesome. Um, it's still nothing on the outside. It's like, it's not even attachment to anything that's happening. So I'll say that first, but where I am a little bit more asleep <laughs> is, sorry, I don't have my picture on. I should, I just not look at my Sunday best. Um, so where I'm a little bit more asleep is I'm also, I mean, you know this, but I'm sharing this with everybody. I'm also um, the CEO of this company and that we're a startup tech startup. And I also realize that I need to set some boundaries and have this person that joined, um, do some things. And I felt myself getting a little annoyed, um, because really what I learned through this conversation is I'm wanting to be light or if I say X, Y, and Z, this person in the company is, uh, yeah, not going to like me. And that's so opposite of the other dancing I'm doing uh, with the divine. That's it. Well, wonderful clarity, wonderful awareness that you, like everybody else that incarnates, has two voices in your head. you got the voice of source that has you be centered and grounded and clear about what's true. And you have opportunities to also hear the voice of the ego that of course it wants others to like us because it's a reflection that we don't like ourselves. Yeah. And that all that means is I'm not going to be okay unless I get your approval. So y y the opportunity for you is to do to love yourself enough, which I know in this case you, you have by just bringing that to the foreground. So that means you've had the courage to affirm what's going on. Instead of righteousness, you're affirming from a place of neutrality. Okay, so this is happening. I need somebody to like me. It's, it's really nothing more than questioning. Can I do this one with you? Sure, of course, you know okay. me, I'm open. <laughs> yes, well, I still wanted to check in. So if that person doesn't like you, what do you believe that would say about you? 
um, that I don't have the ability that I'm not lovable and I have no friends okay. because this person's also a friend. Okay. So then you have to question, is this really true? Do you have friends? Yes or no? Yes. Besides that person. Um, yes. Do you have abilities to, to be able to, to run this business to, in a way that would let you find somebody else to do it if this person doesn't work out? Yes or no? Absolutely. Okay. So this person liking you or not liking you is an excuse that your ego mind is using to keep you from being clear about what is true about you. And you get to decide, is this story about not people not liking me where, you know, and obviously you and I have coached for a long time, so you should be able to go to this pretty quickly. Where, where do you feel, at what age did that belief that others don't like you? Where, where do you believe that that started? What it age? happened at, it happened at five and my mother made fun of me at the bus stop and said, nobody likes you. Nobody's talking to you. Okay. So do you want to continue to wear this five-year-old uh, belief? And it's a hand-me-down belief. Mom handed it down to you. You yeah. accepted it at five because at five, you were taught that only your mother knew what was true about you. And True. you were not raised to believe your own truth about yourself. So imagine that belief, nobody's going to like you. Imagine that belief is the size of a dress that a five-year-old girl would wear. Okay. So imagine you trying to put that dress on. <laughs> okay. So how, how well is that fitting you? Not can you even, so well. Can you even get it over your head? No. All right. So why would you attempt to put on a dress that doesn't fit you when that dress is, a, is nothing but a representation of a belief that you have outgrown? This is where you have the power to override that belief. So when it happens again, it is your job to say, I'm not going to believe what is no longer true. That was my mom's truth. And just forget her. She didn't know what she was doing because she picked that belief up from somebody else. None of us come with a brain full of information sure. that is recorded. Anything that is negative is recorded while we're here. It gets added to the radio station because it comes, you know, through, through the radio waves of another station. But what is of God does can't be found anywhere except for in you. So what do you want to believe is true about you? Oh, uh, I want to believe that I'm lovable. But what I heard is in my head when you were talking is it's just a habitual old dress. Yeah. It's and just at, habitual. At what point are you going to let go what doesn't fit you anymore? Now. Okay. That it's, it's that simple. But I know it's taking many years to get here because there are so many other supporting beliefs that were part of that crazy structure. Yeah. And it's that willingness to look at it again and again and again and again and say no to it again and again and again. Because the minute that you hear that belief one more time, say, oh, there you are, old friend. I don't wear that size anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not interested in that belief. And you know what? If that friend decides to not be your friend for any reason, it's mm -hmm. not meant to be your friend. Oh, yeah. You let it go. It if somebody's going to be that shallow, why would you want to hold on to them? Right. And it's like arguing with God. Absolutely. And you're never going to win that argument. Don't want to. <laughs> well, thank you for that wonderful <laughs> thank example. You. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. So glad that this was practical for you to, to be able to look at. I appreciate your help. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if anybody else has something that they want to share about what we've talked about so far, go ahead and, and um, unmute I'm unmuted. Yourself. Oh, hello. Hello, <laughs> Miss Kat. Hi. Well, <clears throat> I just keep getting, no, not little, but, but I get, I got an aha uh, out of, like, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I mean, my uh, I've got family who I haven't seen any of my grandson coming in um, Monday and I'm trying to organize, th to make things and nobody's 
it's not working. I'm like, and <clears throat> so I was, you know, trying to figure out, well, how do I make sure I'm included? Well, fuck that. I'm over it. So if they invite me, I'll see my family. If they don't, I'm going to be happy anyway. I'll find something to do um, or not. <laughs> Doesn't mean, but it was, it did have, it did, there was the shift in hearing this because I've already got that in other places, but it just came to me like in this situation, I'm causing myself some suffering. It seems like little, but it's not. And I don't have to suffer. <laughs> I mean, I love them with all my heart and soul. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me ask you. It's just such a freedom. I love that. I love that cat. So let me ask you and feel it feel into this and go to the place that is that is when this came came to you as as the hand-me-down belief how old were you when you really wanted your family to love in you and include you and think of you as being important to the family and being part of 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 it to feel okay I, or it could have been mom said, you know, you could have heard mom say, oh, they didn't include me in the family reunion or dad felt left out of their family at some, some level. This, this is something you've got to inquire. If it doesn't come up to you here as easily as it did for Jody, sit with, where did I pick up that the only way you should be, you should feel loved by family or accepted by is if they include you. I think it's sort of a, even more broad than family. <clears throat> so uh, I can remember an incident at Girl Scout camp and my saying something, don't know what, but it caused everybody to be against me. How old were you? Uh, probably about eight or nine. All right. So, so that something that's been carrying, carried for the, those many years, cause us to do things in a certain way for people to like us, to approve of us, to include us. And feeling excluded creates discomfort. And we want to avoid the discomfort of being excluded, but what we need to do is correct our, our definition of being excluded. Because mm -hmm. if people in this frequency exclude you, if you are at this frequency, that's like a good thing. Because then you you will connect with people who vibe at a frequency of that that's lighter, that's funner, that's easier. If people that are operating at lower frequencies include you, you must come down to that frequency if you believe that it's that you are receiving their love. Also, people at this frequency, if they do include you, you can hold this frequency by being in the, in the world, but not of it, by realizing, okay, you've invited me here. This is wonderful. Don't participate in the drama. Don't participate in the blaming conversation. And if they don't include you, it's a good thing. It really is a good thing because if you are in your peace, then you can decide what, how do you want to spend that, that time? Do you want to listen to your own music at home? Do you want to go hang out with other friends? You include yourself in something else that's happening that's of a higher frequency. We have total and complete control of our frequency. And to have control of your frequency means you're a sovereign being accepting that you are the bringer of the love and the joy. And if somebody doesn't want your love and joy there, Okay, they've informed you that that's not going to be a fun place. So gratitude. Thank you for not including me. That saved me from showing <laughs> up and realizing what a dud of a party this is going to be. <laughs> yeah. And, and become, I'm so grateful. Yes. Don't give a shit is a very high frequency. <laughs> I love it. It's so freeing. It's so freeing. I'm excited for you. Well, let's, let's complete um, this, this gathering with this lesson, you're going to love this. So this is lesson two third or two ninety three. 
293 in, inside of the Course in Miracles lessons. And this one, the title is All Fear is Past and Only Love is Here. So your eight-year-old picked up that fear of exclusion in Girl Scout camp and Jody picked it up at the bus stop at five years old. So all fear is always from the past. That's why in one of the beginning lessons, the course is teaching us, you don't see what's really in front of you. We never do. We only see the past because the ego recorded information. It's inside of, you know, our, our I mean, it's mixed metaphors here. We were talking about a radio, but think of a projector, movie projector, same thing. Uh, a radio brings in music that's already on the planet. A, a movie projector brings a movie that's already been created. So we always project out there something that is always from the past. All fear is past because its source is gone and all its thoughts gone with it. The source of fear, well, Jody's mom is gone. She doesn't even live on the planet anymore. So that source is totally gone. Your Girl Scout troop, that's gone. That's over with. That's not even a source in your life, but you retained, you recorded the thought and it keeps playing in your mind. Love remains the only present state whose source is here forever and forever. You have the source of love. Am I going to love myself enough to let go of that hand-me-down belief that's past? That, that Girl Scout, that was decades ago. Mom at the bus stop, that was decades ago. What is here? I can turn on the love faucet because it's what's in me. It's what was given to me, like the light of the sun. It's always there. Am I going to block it with an old belief or am I going to feel the love of God, the love of self, the love of my magnificence, my holiness? Am I going to feel it? Well, I can't blame them for not inviting me and being miserable. I can thank them. Okay, you didn't invite me, but I feel good. Why? Because I love me. I love myself enough to not enjoy feeling good. It's my birthright. Sentence number three says, can the world seem bright and clear and safe and welcoming with all my past mistakes oppressing it and showing me distorted forms of fear? No, you can't be in a world that is bright and cheerful and happy if you're afraid that somebody's not going to like you, if you're afraid that somebody's going to fire you, if you're afraid that you're not going to be safe, if you're afraid you're going to be excluded. All of those fears have been learned and if you are seeing life through the veil of that fear, then you are creating your own suffering. And guess what I'm going to say? Congratulations for making yourself miserable. That's how you're choosing to use your power. Good for you. I know my clients, um, and some of you can attest to this, don't like it when I say congratulations for being so miserable. Congratulations for how much you're suffering because I really want you to know it's always your power, always your power. Nobody can get inside of you and make you feel anything. Nobody can make you emotionally feel a goddamn thing. You are the one who choose to feel how you feel because your thoughts create how you feel. All right, sentence number four. Yet in the present, in the present love, it is yet in the present love is obvious and its effects are apparent. In this now moment, if you choose to love yourself, the effect of that is instantaneously. You, you, it's very apparent. You feel it. All the world shines in reflection of its holy light, and I perceive a world forgiven at last. When you choose to be happy, the world has been forgiven. Look at where forgiveness is as a frequency. If you are up here in your joy, You've already forgiven everything else. You've risen beyond forgiveness. You now are residing in being the truth of who you are. You're walking the talk. You're in the world, but you're not of it. You actually get to be the light of the world in that state because you're not blocking it and turning it into darkness by holding on to hand-me-down egoic fears. You have transcended. You have gone beyond that. That's what transcends. You, you raise above that. You end the insanity. So the, the prayer inside of lesson 293 is very simple. So I'm going to read it slowly and I want you all to just take in these words. Now it starts with the word father. If you want to change that, 
father, mother, creator, God, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. We have, we have frequencies around words. For The word God for me had a low frequency for a long time because I was afraid of God. It wasn't until I began to understand what God is that I was able to move beyond um, my thoughts, my fears, my, my concerns. And it's not until we are comfortable with, with accepting that we and the Father are one that we begin to embody the truth of who we are. So, so change the word Father to whatever it is that you need it to be so that you can receive the frequency of the truth here. Father, Mother, God, Creator. Let not your holy world escape my sight today. Nor let my ears be deaf to all the hymns of gratitude the world is singing underneath the sound of fear. There is a real world which the present holds safe from all past mistakes. And I would see only this world before my eyes today. What that is saying is, dear God, creator, source, whatever you want to call it, that exists inside of me. When I choose to align with you as my truth, I can see that this entire world is a world of infinite possibilities. And everyone, even if they're hurting, deep down inside, we have that same potential. So I'm choosing to see all that is happening the fires, the murders, the, the deaths, the suffering, I am going to look at all of them as the result of egos doing what egos do and focus that inside each and every one of those beings is the love and light of your presence, creator source. And when I focus on that light in them, it's because I'm choosing to turn my light on and illuminate the path for them. Because if I am the one who is not, not upset because they don't want to be friends with me, not upset because they fire me, not upset because they don't like me or they don't call me or whatever it is, that in my knowing that it doesn't define who I am, I am still as God created me, they will feel the love that I have for them because they won't be attacked by me. I won't be blaming them. I will be honoring that they can choose to do whatever they want to do because that's how they're wanting to use their power. Father, mother, God, thank you for my clarity because I've chosen to align with the truth of who I am. And I am harnessing that power because perfect love casts out all fear. I'm not wearing the fear from when I was eight or when I was five or when I was two or when I was in the womb or from a past life. I've taken off all of those hand-me-down beliefs and I am expressing myself in all of my holy glory, being the light that I came here to be. Doesn't matter how long it's taken us to get to this place, but if we ascend our consciousness to the level of ultimate truth, your work, as I know is mine, is to forgive everybody when they don't know what they're doing because they've been hijacked by their ego and we have compassion for where they are, not sympathy. You don't want to feel bad for somebody using your power. They, they can use their power however they want to. You acknowledge, hey, it's okay if you don't want to invite me. That's perfectly okay. You deserve to have whoever you want to have there at the party. I'm, it was perfect. It gave me three hours to be at home or I went and met up with some friends. That teaches them what love does. Telling them how wrong they were teaches them what fear and insecurity does. We teach what we most want to learn. Do you want to teach that you are okay no matter what? Or do you want to teach that other people have power over you by being needy and, and blamey and judgy and blah, blah, blah. It's time. The world needs teachers of truth. The world needs teachers of people who stand grounded in their knowingness that all information that they trust comes through internal guidance. 
right now, the external world of, of uh, righteousness, of pride, of they know better than we do is crumbling because a lot of us are not going outside of us for, for um, our truth. We are embodying truth inside of us and are in this world, but we're not playing by their games anymore. We're playing with the rules to the game that God gave us, which is go forth, descend into planet earth. If you go a little low, that's all right, come back up and then love them anyway so that they can begin to see the power of love because perfect love casts out all fear. And if you show the friend or you show you know, the family that you're not afraid of their choices, at some point when they're ready, they will have to question, why did we leave her out? Why did I break up with that friend? Because in your lack of reaction, you have created the space for them to inquire into their actions. And that's why we have to be the light of the world. That's why we have to be the gentle ones because our gentleness is necessary in a world that is so full of suffering and discomfort. I see somebody wrote a chat. Patricia, your teaching keeps going deeper every week. Thank you for sharing your teaching experiences, knowledge with us every week, feeling blessed and grateful. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, I love sharing. I love, love, love sharing. And that's why I love coaching and teaching and all those wonderful things. And, and you know what, these, these complimentary sessions every Wednesday, I do them because I want to co-create a world of people who live from the truth of who they are. And if I can get these some some of you to come to a class or a coaching that that does require a monetary exchange then i still want to share what i know because it benefits me it benefit this is co-creating the world that i want my grandson to live in so the more the truth is sprinkled out there and i'm not the only teacher of truth that shares um, as much as as i share it's, it's all over the place uh, why because god is calling us back into the truth of who we are so more of us have to share the truth for those who are ready, willing, and um, just ready to have the courage necessary to move out of thinking we know it all when we don't know much because we're blocking that knowledge with our own egoic righteousness, all based on fear. So thank you. Thank you so much for those sweet, that sweet comment. Patricia, thanks, Dondra, for your hearts. All right, let's everybody unmute. And just share what is a nugget that you have received in today's uh, call that you can take with you and maybe put it into practice. So anybody, go ahead. For me to get out of my ego and get into my heart and, and be the truth, be the truth of who I am. Exactly. And when you forget really? to do that, forgive yourself. We forgive for forgetting. That's that simple. Oops, I forgot. No biggie. Lina, I have kind of sort of question. Yes. Hello, Julia. It's, it's Julia. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> got it. Great. Like, you know, you just explain everything clear, easy. That's wonderful. Thank you so much again. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, <clears throat> kind of more efficient way like you know still using my brain you know still using my <laughs> so if we're talking about love in any kind of situation heal this situation if we want to heal ourselves with love okay so what would be your suggestion where to start like you know to share like you know to start with loving yourself more sending love and uh, to yourself or to the world to the person to the situation it, it, i understand it's kind of sort of the same but this, it's you know where to start that's a great question and where to start is gentleness just be gentle. So 
we while we are shifting love down here is a love of transaction i do for you you do for me and we we can begin by being gentle and just just recognizing you know what i i want to I want to be kinder and, and softer in this situation. Maybe at work, um, you, you want to be more gentle with people instead of being harsh and, and this is my way or the highway because that's conditional love. It, you got to do it my way for me to like you. That, that's ego love. But gentleness says, you know what? I'm used to doing it this way. I'm going to be gentle with myself. And I'm going to try to be gentle with them. And if I'm not gentle with them, I'll come back and forgive myself for forgetting how to be gentle. But I'm going to be gentle with myself first by not making myself wrong when I can't be gentle with others. Mm -hmm. So it starts with that gentleness, treating ourselves like we would our our two-year-old. And that's you know, your baby makes a mistake, we go, it's okay, you know, you, you fell off, whatever, you hurt yourself, it's okay, it's a, it's a mistake. So gentleness is key. It's one of the characteristics that we have to cultivate is, but it starts with being gentle with ourselves. And from there, what happens is it feels good. You begin to realize, oh, wow, being gentle with myself or with others, it feels better. And we begin, when we begin to put two and two together, my thoughts create how I feel. And if it feels better to be gentle, it's because I was thinking I'm going to be kind and gentle instead of I'm going to be, you know, my regular bitch or when my regular boss or my regular, you know, know it all. So the thought of being gentle feels better. And little by little, once you realize that feeling better, feeling good is better you will more and more and more begin to deliberately mm-hmm. choose to think differently how you show up. You'll want to, to show up as a um, more gentle person because you'll get addicted to feeling good. You won't want to give your power away and feel bad because once you make the decision to be more loving, you begin to realize how bad it feels when you're not Because then it activates guilt, it activates shame, it activates, oh my gosh, I can't believe I couldn't be nice. So that's, you're going to practice that gentleness with yourself so that you become more clear Mm -hmm. of how good it feels to be gentle. And then, then it snowballs, then it, then you want to be gentle with everybody because it feels good as you learn what, what true love is all about. Okay. Does, Does that help? Definitely. Definitely. Good. Thank you. So glad you joined so, us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Me too. <laughs> yes. Well, uh-huh. everybody just unmute yourselves and let's wish each other a wonderful day and, and uh, enjoy your weekend here in the U.S. We've got uh, it, it's Independence Day. It's a day that we're supposed to to experience freedom. And I am going to just leave you with this. This is a country that was founded on on Course in Miracles principles. Every one of us in the constitution is granted by our government, our founding fathers put it in there, the the ability to pursue life, liberty, and happiness because it it recognizes it. It is given to each and every one of us by our creator. We are each endowed with that freedom. If we're not experiencing that, it's because an external source is deciding that we don't deserve it. We shouldn't have it. So be clear that you were created free and this country acknowledges that. If something is not matching, use your voice to correct it. We have to correct anybody whose mind is confused about what is true about each and every one of us. But we do it lovingly and gently, not aggressively, because that does not change anything. We have to example, example what is, um, you know, the the world that we want to create. So everybody have a wonderful day. So unmute yourselves and please say goodbye to one another. Send some love to each other. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye, everybody. everybody. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye -bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Bye, Lina. Thank you. How do I get out of this? <laughs> <laughs>